first of all, I thought I was going to do try to do more of the exercises and actually try to model them, but I didn't get into that until last night and this morning. And I don't know if anyone else has tried this, but so first of all, can everyone see my screen, right? Everyone can. Yes. Okay, good. Um, yeah. And so it takes forever to run these models, at least, I don't know, my, I mean, I'm sure there's ways to speed it up or whatever, but um I I just ran them this morning and I, I I'm actually I actually need to get a new computer. This like I only have like a couple gigs of like RAM, I think, and I'm I'm getting uh, uh, I this this crashes sometimes. So anyway, I'll just kind of walk through. I mean, this is you know sort of the last, well, I guess next week is really the last extension by adding other layers, but so the only really difference right. th this chapter versus you know the previous couple is the outcome is is of a different nature um then the sort of normal uh distribution distribution uh kind of linear model um so i'll kind of walk through the the logistic example and then the the count i mean i one thing to think about is when you talk about poisson and negative binomial instead of thinking about the separatists they're both count models that's what i would call them because the variable itself is a, a something that we count that you know can't be less than zero and has to move in, in whole units and stuff like that so um so they talk about this um climbers um situation where we have you know climbers that are nested within expeditions and um and then they have this sort of um success which you know is at the actual uh, climber level so you can have multiple climbers in an exposition obviously expedition and only a fraction of those people can can be successful aka i guess summit the mountain or whatever so um if we if we ignore the um expedition level and just look at sort of the member id as a as a, um a way you know just at the member level of looking at success versus failure we have just over um 60 percent are failing which I don't know. I guess that I'm not sure if that's good or bad. It doesn't really matter, I guess. But um, you know, but there are um, you know, there are sort of there's we have 200 um is that right? Yeah, there's 200 expeditions to sort of choose from. So there's got to be some kind of variation. That's the contention here, right? That and I and I didn't write this down in the code, but there is this sort of contention that hey, within a you know, if you get paired with people in um your your expedition if they're better climbers that's going to have some impact on whether or not you summit yourself right if you're successful yourself um so if we don't include that sort of piece of you know the variance related to being in expedition a versus b or whatever um then we're kind of missing out on that. And so if you remember quite a long time ago, I think Ron was the one that talked about this first and when he opened up talking about hierarchical models, this idea of the complete pooling approach where, you know, we're analyzed, we're just assuming independence, right? So each, we, if, if we assume independence for this type of data, um, we're getting, you know, we're assuming that, you know, each uh the whether or not each uh climber is successful is completely independent of the people that they're with and the group of people that they go up with which you know i think even if we're not rock climbers or mountain climbers i think we can appreciate that that's probably a um a, a not a great assumption um so what we really are needing to do is sort of incorporate this variability that exists at the expedition level right so what we would if if this was a non-hierarchical model we would be focused exclusively on or I should not, not I mean from a variability standpoint at least um the variability between individuals but that's not sufficient as we've kind of hopefully laid out so this is supposed to say pi i j which is the probability that climber i in expedition j successfully summits so it's this new piece of um the j um expedition feature that that's sort of new and so um there, we we call this is what's called a random intercepts um a logistic regression model that's uh, something that's often referred to as either um well a multi-level model a hierarchical model or a mixed effects model those are it all kind of means the same thing um it's just different 
language. I know it seems like to me, like in education research, it's often referred more to as multi-level models, whereas in like medicine, it's more often referred to as mixed effects. I don't know if anyone else has any other specific experiences, but I have a question about that. You said you you have done some of this in the past, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So is the is do you yeah. find yourself mostly using the random intercepts, or does the random slope thing come in very much at all? It's a great How question. It's a great question because a lot of it has to do with if, if the model will converge, you know, depending on how much data you have and like how complicated it is. So, so just to be clear, like Robert, so a random intercept is what you're saying is, is like that you're, you're giving an intercept for each of the cluster memberships, which in this case is expedition, right? Yeah. Um, but then uh, a random slope is you're allowing each cluster group to have its own line in addition yep. to its own. Okay, so I'm, I'm just making sure. Sorry, I wasn't. I just oh, want to make. Oh sure. no, 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 no worries. Um, yeah, but so what happens a lot is if you have, um, well, let me let me be clear with this. Like so, um, in uh, these types of hierarchical models are really common in say education, right? So where you have students nested within classrooms, and not classrooms that are nested within schools, and schools that are nested in within districts. I mean, that's maybe each, maybe any given study doesn't include all those levels, but typically it would be like students within classrooms within schools or something like that. Um, so you have, you can have multiple clustering kind of identifications. And so um, that's not longitudinal, right? You might just be like, okay, let's look at, I don't know, some test score in students across classrooms and within schools and stuff like that. And so you're looking at one person at one data point at one time. What I was, what I did in the past is I did a lot of like observational research where we wouldn't look at like, you know, longitudinal data on people like who are filling out, say like depression inventories or anxiety inventories, you know, at a regular or you know, semi-regular basis. Um, the problem is, is different people have different numbers of completions, right? So over like a six year period, let's say patient A is, you know, maybe they do, you know, five or six, you know, completions and the other person does, you know, 20 and another person does two, right? And so you have these sort of varying numbers of assessments that happen at sort of, you know, varying times. They're not like, I mean, in a perfect world, everyone would do it every three months, right? And everybody would have the same number of assessments. So this type of hierarchical model where the only hierarchy is assessments nested or, you know, hierarchically organized under individuals. Does that make sense, um, Ron? So like yes. in, that, in that case, what you're trying to do is give each person their own intercept and then, you know, their own um, slope. But there are times like when you try to fit that and it just blows up. And I, I, I and I've been, I haven't done it in a while. There's a bunch of different statistical reasons for that. There's just maybe not enough, you're not powered well enough, or there's, you know, there's um, I a lot of times what I find is like, um, especially I used to work in neurology, right? And so neurology has tons of what we would call factor variables, right? Or categorical variables, like, you know, are they in a coma or not? Or you know, what kind of structure they have, what kind of this. And so the more of those types of, um, like, you know, the more sort of categorical variables, it just the more degrees of freedom you end up using up and it just gets ugly. I don't know if anyone else has had that experience. You get a lot of sparsity where the different combinations of categorical predictors just make, you know, fitting a model just a mess. So anyway, so for the purposes of, um, this example, like what the, in this is, I like this sentence. So in plain English, so the underlying success rates might differ from expedition to expedition, which is all that we're trying to say. By the way, one thing that's really important to say, and I think, I think um, we talked about this in one of the previous meetings. It's not really that we care about the effect of what what the effect of the cluster of the cluster variable or expedition in this case is. It's just that we are accounting for it, right? So that when we then talk about being younger or using oxygen yes or no which is what this model um here does that from the book we can just say we've accounted for this right there's there's variance related to being from one expedition to another so we're um we're taking advantage of that so anyway the only thing that's really different from you know when we did 
um, logistic uh, regression in the past is this piece right here, right? So this one, um, I, I never know what to call this, this vertical, uh, what, what do you call this, Ron? Like, or, 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 or Robert, like I, I um, like when the, this vertical line, um, or I guess it's an or, you know, sort of, or as a function. I, just, I know yeah. an R, it just allows it to, right, just just the varying intercepts. I just call it like, yeah. Call it a bar. I mean, a that's bar. what I call it. Yeah, yeah, I call it a bar. I call it a bar, um, even though bar yeah. might be not, but yeah. Yeah, because it's because because you know, and like in the case of you know, when we've been doing all this Bayesian stuff, it's you know, um, whatever this you know, like, like, side has a conditioning. Yeah, yeah, conditioning on this or as a function of blah blah blah. This is not so basically what this says is this the we're just I, mean, I would call it I would have called it a pipe, but you can't call it that in, in R. Yeah, <laughs> now yeah, we, we, pipe has gone a different way for sure. Um, yeah. anyway, so this is, this, this feature here is, is how you would do a random intercept. This is, this is specifying that random intercept only. Um, we're not, we're saying, well, first of all, um, we're not, yeah, we're not going to worry about the idea of slope right now, but so anyway, the point is, is that each person, each expedition gets its own intercept. That's what this means. So that's the only new thing here that would not, we would take this out, um, of the model to make a non-hierarchical model by the way so this is what took forever man like i i don't yeah so um and and it has to do like four chains and so each of these took you know quite a long time here so um i'm, I'm not going to uh, i was like gonna be all clever and try to run it a bunch of different ways and um yeah so then it gives you the, I, I ran this this is all just code from the book right so prior summary just to, you know to check our um you know confirmation of the prior specifications this is you know sort of you know, standard stuff that we would expect um and then i actually tried to run this this did not look, look real great i don't know why they put all this in here because there's so many freaking um so yeah it's this I don't, yeah yeah i don't really know why uh, they called them out they never actually did that <laughs> they never actually showed them right so anyway yeah. so, whatever it's not a big deal um and then yeah, the, I like this. Um, oh yeah, another thing that like they they, they created this n reps thing, which is apparently um, I'm not sure why it's it's ignored, but that once again I just copied and pasted this. So yeah, so this is the the actual success rate, and these are the predicted success rates around it, and. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, uh, it, it is, you know, it is what it is. And then like last, actually, I don't know, this is one thing I did have trouble with. I don't know if either of you can figure this out. So I don't know, I love using like tidy helper kind of like, so this is from like the broom package. This, I think the the broom um, mix, I think dot mix. Is oh, I did, yeah, I just dropped, so maybe. <laughs> You're still online according to Slack, so here he comes. Yeah. Why did the internet does that periodically just drops? Sorry about that. How 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 uh how long uh, was I gone for? Like 30 uh, you seconds. were just to talk about tidy.mixed. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, just all, broom all of a sudden I was like, hello, what happened? Um <laughs> all right. Yeah, I I have I have to um I this is actually something I need to go do, which is um my my modem apparently is not up to snuff and so uh, for i can go to my uh, okay so yeah this i don't know if anyone's ever used the tidy function from broom before but like if you do a lot of modeling and stuff it's glorious now one thing that's kind of frustrating is um does anyone remember how to interpret these like what what, what unit are these estimates in oh it's not it's right in the log scale log odds. Log, odds. Log, log odds yeah log yeah, odds, yeah. 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 Log off, so yeah. the thing I don't really get is, is in a lot of tidy functions of these like sort of, so like, so first of all, I, let me be clear. So I never used Broom before? Probably not. I mean, Ron, probably not because you're not an art user and Robert, I don't know. Maybe, no. Probably not. I don't I, I've know. used it a little bit, but yeah. So they have in, in, in some verse, in some versions of the tidy function from some packages, because there's a bunch of different packages that use that kind of, because they've created a bunch of ones for different model types. Um, you have an exp exponentiate equals true and it will just automatically exponentiate but yeah so you need to like um you know uh 
you just you know you gotta do this by hand which is sort of dumb right um i think yeah this is yeah so one thing i didn't really get from this is and i don't know if you guys understood this but so um oh i'm, I'm doing this for the intercept which is stupid sorry let me do um i don't care about that i care about um this right so one thing i didn't really understand was for the effective age um so if we exponentiate these uh the 80 percent um um credible or i forget what we call these credible intervals um okay so they say there's an 80% chance that the odds of successfully summiting drop somewhere between 3 to 3.5% and 8.5.8% for every extra year. And I'm not really sure I understand why that is. Oh, um, yeah, maybe I'm just making this too complicated. But anyway, so that was, um, yeah, so... It's just, yeah, it's just what it is, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so. So one minus that is that. Um, oh, is right. The, the odds drop, you know. It's kind of funny oh. thing to say, though, like the odds drop by 6%. Yeah, so anyway, so that's, 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 that's or that. Right? So, yeah, I mean, so this is, this is something you, you would do in, in sort of quote unquote, you know, frequentist or normal quote unquote non Bayesian, you know, modeling. Um, if the only difference would be to have the confidence interval and the p value, which of course we, we are getting rid of here. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is, a, this is the, the only difference is this inclusion of um, this idea of credible intervals and, and then also the ability to classify what you can do and sort of, once again, quote unquote, you know, non basic. I, mean, I don't want to belabor too much, but yeah. I do think it's important to recognize there is a difference here. Um, in classical statistics, you have a confidence interval, which has to do with your sampling distribution. You're saying, oh, right, if right, I did yes. this experiment many, many times. Whereas here, we're actually, we're in a Bayesian worldview, we're saying, no, we're saying that the, uh, the probability is 80% that the actual true odds are somewhere in between this range, uh, or at least that's our estimate, right? So it's a different perspective. So it's not really a, a it's a really is a confidence interval, not a um, not a what do you call the other one? Credible, uh, credible, credible interval. interval. Credible. Not a credible interval, right? Yeah. Credible is kind of like a wishy washy way of avoiding saying that anything about probability, about, right? Because in, in in frequency statistics, you can't say that the pro, you can't say a sentence like there's an eighty percent chance that the odds are, but you cannot say something like that. Right, it's yeah. not allowed. I mean, yeah, you yeah you would you would people do anyway. But that's trick. <laughs> well, you would say we're ninety five percent confident that you know the um, yeah. you know the effect of age on summoning yeah. blah, between blah 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 and blah 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 or something like that. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. Confidence and is so code then, for that whole sentence about if you ran this experiment, many many. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The interval yeah, would actually yeah. hold the value. Yeah. Yeah. And then so um, next thing they did was just create new data to kind of see like, you know, how, how, how well we predicted it. So we've got, you know, two 20 year olds, two 60 year olds, and then we've varied whether or not each age group gets, you know, oxygen, yes or no. And so these are the, the pr predicted, um, uh, um, oh yeah. So these are the, the sort of predicted odds of, of um, making it to the top, right? So unsurprisingly the 60 year old what's that those are actually probabilities and this those are actually probabilities. Those are probabilities sorry yeah forgive me sorry i'm 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 mixing up my my language uh so these are probabilities we have a 15 percent chance if you're 60 and not getting oxygen of summiting and you get an 80 ish percent chance if you're 20 and getting oxygen so um and then lastly did we talk about sensitivity and specificity probably did last week and i just met you know yes. so so in this case, we have no. We did we did way back in the logistic yeah. progression chapter. So anyone kind of can anybody give me like a in in, in um, sort of normal language like what 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 sensitivity means? I completely forget. Yeah. 
Good. I'm glad I, I'm glad I, I'm stopping them for a second. Um, you know, it probably it's fair to say that. Um, oh, sorry. Um, well, sensitivity is basically like how well are you, um, you know, flagging the you know the people um, when they're actually having the outcome that you're interested in, right? Like, you know, in this case, it would be the summiters, right? So how do how well are we predicting? How accurately are we grabbing all of the summiters, you know, that exist, right? Specificity is how well are we excluding all all the, uh, how well are we excluding all of the non summiters, right? So um you know a common thing that you can happen happen that you can have a lot is that's, in certain... that's a great way of putting that by the way really nice concise yeah, way of putting yeah that. The, the not, <laughs> how, how well are we getting are we, are we checking the non summoners yeah. right so um a common thing you might see in, in a number of sensitivity specificity analysis is like really high sensitivity and then really crappy specificity which you know tells you that like what I mean what does that tell you I mean, before I say anything else Robert, what, what, if I say I have um, high sensitivity and low specificity, what is what, what's what is my model doing in terms of identifying? Um, so if it has high, sensi high sensitivity. Yeah, that means. And so remember, remember, we're trying to predict summiting, right? Or like you know how you know the, that's that's our outcome. So it has to be some kind of dichotomous thing. So high sensitivity means that. You're predicting too many summoning? Not too many. Um, it's probably most likely you're predicting um, the, the summiters, but you're probably grabbing a bunch of non summiters too, right? Oh, okay. Does that so make it's sense? more like false yeah. positives. Uh, exactly. You're right. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah. And so, if you have, um, and this happens, can be reversed, right? If you have high specificity but poor sensitivity. That means you're doing a good job of you know ditching the non summiters but you're doing a crappy job of you know predicting the summiters right got it okay right. so of course like you'd, like to do, you'd like to do both perfectly which of course never yeah happens. it's like yeah. so it's um just trying to think of this in my head so i've always seen this like a machine learning but it's never really like grokked it um i know i know believe me I... so it's like your model is it's being like almost like too broad right so it's not really doing a good job at like trying to identify who is like summoning and who isn't right it's just having a lot more people who like aren't right and that's obviously not good and the yeah. reverse is it's doing a really good job at identifying people who aren't right yeah, yeah. but to the detriment of exactly. um not finding your positive case right um yeah it's almost yeah. like it, like it's maybe this is i'm not sure if this is like a right way to think about it it's like Essentially, this is like a separation problem, right? You're trying yeah. to figure, like, trying to obviously, like, correctly predict two groups, but you're, like, doing it badly in two different ways. One, you're including too many people. Right. One, and the other one, you're you're not, right? Just the inverse yeah. of that. Exactly. Yeah, so, Got it. and one of the things to think about, I mean, in biostats, I mean, in medicine, healthcare, we think about this. Well, I don't, I don't think about this anymore, but I used to, is, like, you know, what's, what's more valuable um doing in, in sensitivity so is it more important to to get all the people or is it more important that that actually have the thing or the, the outcome that you're interested in or is it more important to you know avoid false positives right yeah so think about like we had a huge well i mean think about covid right i mean so you know these cheap you know, COVID tests, which, you know, make people so mad, you know, um, what, what's, what's the sensitivity specificity issue there? Like, how could we characterize that? I mean, let me just, let me lay it out actually. So the, the idea is people are taking them and then they go, well, I actually, I don't know there's, it could be multiple things, but what I hear a lot is, oh, the, you know, the, um, these cheap, whatever, easier tests, they're not, yeah. they, they don't pick up, um, you know, they, they don't pick up the, the the virus or whatever. Is that fair to yeah. say? Is that, is that what people hear? I don't know. Um, so um, we, yeah, I guess I, yeah, it's it's funny. I actually hear like more of it's like more critical of like it's too sensitive. Oh, that, is that at least right? that's what I've that's, that's what I've seen. Like, I'm not I'm not saying at all that you're wrong. Like, that's just like what I've heard in my experience. Um, that people are right. like this. There's no way, and it's like I'm pretty sure you know. Well, actually, that's interesting, right? So then you think about right with those tests. It's like what you're saying what are i think we were kind of alluding to right it's like 
what are the things that you're more interested in, right? I guess with COVID, you probably want higher sensitivity, right? Like mm -hmm. in the sense that it's fine if you have some like a larger yeah. number of false positives, right? Because right. the other, because the flip side of that, you could then be doing a bad job at predicting who actually has COVID and then that could be bad, right? Because then yes. if you're not correctly predicting that, then, then people are going to spread it and then more people are going to get sick and maybe die yeah. or like have long COVID and all that, you know, bad, yeah. bad shit. Yeah, right, 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 um, right, right. So in right. that case, right, it's like, you probably want COVID tests to be more like sensitive rather than like having yeah. higher sensitivity rather than like specificity. Yeah, because, you know, a false positive is is probably the lesser of two evils, right? So the, so just to be clear, a false positive when it's like when you say, I always, when I taught this, like I used to teach research methods for years and years, and I used to always say that like a false positive is like selling snake oil, right? So, you know, snake yep. oil tells me they're saying, hey, this is going to clear up your acne and make you better looking and all these things. And of course, it's doing none of those things, right? Um, and then of course, a false negative is you're saying, you know, the famous one is, you know, the woman who's pregnant and, and the person says, yeah, I think you're, you're, you're still not pregnant, you know, or something like that. Like you're missing the, the detection or something like that. Um, and so, yeah, in this case, um, missing the, the um, or having a false positive is less probably dangerous and, you know, than having a false negative. Now, I don't know, like I have had a friend who had a false um, positive on an HIV test years and years ago. And can you imagine like, yeah, <laughs> um, how upsetting that would be? Cause then you gotta, you know, go get another test and it might take you a number of days and, or, yeah. you know, different cancer things, or uh, I don't know. I mean, just how, think, imagine how upset you would be. I mean, so, you know, obviously it's still probably better to have higher sensitivity and, you know, have some false positives, but it is something to kind of weigh. Anyway, that's not really a hierarchical issue um, per se, but it, it holds for, you know, all kinds of classification models. All right. So one of the things I thought would be kind of cool is just to kind of practice more like, you know, is this model that's implied in each of these numbered, this is you know, exercise 18.1, I'm not sure if you got into this, Ron, but um, so is this a hierarchical model? Yes or no? And so I did, remember, and I'm glad you brought it up because I actually found that not totally straightforward. Maybe you did. Yeah, I totally exactly. I, I don't know. There, there may be more than one right answer. Just, so just to remember, what makes something hierarchical is some other level of clustering other than at the individual level that we're trying to account for, right? So that clustering variable expedition you know, ID variable isn't something we care about figuring as out a the predictor, way, right? As yeah. a predictor, but it's like, can we make sure that we account for this and then look at other things, right? So, okay, so using coffee rating data, which to model whether a batch of coffee beans is of the robustest species based on its flavor. This is, a, this is quite a start. What do y'all think? Is this hier hierarchical? Or another way of saying this would be clustered or, or multi-level data, yes or no? At first I said no, and then I went with yes, and I can give you my logic if you want, but. Sure. Um, so what do you think? Was, Robert, Robert, hold on, Robert, I want to hear what Robert says, first of all. Scroll quick. Um, using the cuts, research which to model whether a batch of coffee beans is mm -hmm. of, so what, you have, so what, the data is just, different types of coffee, right? right? Mm -hmm. And then, so is each row like a batch of coffee or or is it more like exactly. each? Yeah, because yeah, each row is a batch from a, there from is a different no, country, a different farm. Oh, you think so? Oh, have you, oh, have you, is can, there, we actually pull, can we actually pull up the data? Is there actually real data for this? Yeah, you can just do, yeah. Well, you so can I think you could just write coffee ratings. Or just question coffee ratings and the little help thing will pop up with what it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, yeah, that yeah. works too. Cause yeah, I just, I was just kind of thinking like of this as a, um, you know, whatever, like, a, um, cause it like, I, no, I could these are all real data. I, I could, I could see what Ron's saying though. It's like, why it could be either. I'm just like curious what the, well, well uh, um, I'm just like curious what, um, view capital V. Yeah. Oh, view. Okay. Yeah, so view because now it's in um 
now it's in your environment. Capital V um, though, for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. Oh. Oh, maybe there's two. I don't know. Oh, did they? Yeah, add... I know there's a small V one. Oh, so you just need to get out of the string. Um, because it will then yeah, it'll automatically just coerce that into like a tip. Oh, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. And then yeah, then it'll load it into your environment. Magic the magic of R. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. There's the owner. Okay. This looks eh, well. Okay. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Ethiopia. So all Altitude. of these are are, are 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 okay. Okay. So. Oh. So okay. I'm gonna species. say. I'm gonna say hierarchical. Yeah. Because it seems like, um, I think if you go back a little bit, there was the a little bit forward uh, to the right sorry not forward <laughs> this is the wrong it. direction I, 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 you, I got it um so yeah there's like species right so like there's species that's what you're predicting right? and then but underneath species there are different varieties right and it looks like there could be different mm. maybe processing yeah. methods well, within I, those. well that's true i didn't think about the processing method. i was just thinking that clearly the farm or not clear, but country of origin or at least would be a grouping factor right because certainly it's going to more like even though the flavor i don't think the slope that is a dependence of the flavor on the uh the ability yeah. of the flavor to predict it isn't going to depend on the country but the actual probability that it is is going to depend on the country so you want to account for that using the language that you said uh, makes sense to me so maybe country of origin or maybe double groups which is something we'll learn yeah next. you can like yeah. country of origin or even maybe like i don't know if this would be too farm. granular maybe even like a farm or at least like variety right maybe like underwrite the, the class of variety there are different ways to you know i think variety here is like a subspecies thing so i think that would be cheating okay. these varieties <laughs> let, me, let me drop some, let me, let me I'm, i i think i've i've i think i've put, I've put my thoughts together here's what i say this is not higher okay good Here's why. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I mean, now this may just may be maybe me being pedantical or whatever, but um, okay. So we've got each row is a, is a is a um, is a batch, right? So there's no individual bean data, which would be stupid, right? So in this case, batches are the observation, right? And yep. the only thing we're trying to do is use flavor as a predictor of whether it's, so there's only two types of species. There's the Arabica, whatever, and then there's Robusto. So all we're doing is saying Robusto, yes or no, one or zero. Right. So this is, yeah, I mean, now, all the stuff that you said, Ron, is correct. If you're like, um, you know, if it was like, oh, they want to figure this out based on the flavor, controlling for the effects of, you know, country, you know, like there's all, all these other things, then you'd want probably then you'd want to bring in um well actually I probably you'd probably want to bring in um the owner or like the, the, the farm. I guess well no actually probably the farm name because it looks like maybe there's if there's maybe there's um if if, if there's owners with more than one farm, you probably want to treat farm as like the, the well, look know, at that one, robusta Robusta SA. That's you know what kind of variety they produce. Yeah, <laughs> right. So isn't right. it going to be though similar to the problem with the climber though, right? Because like we only, let's say we only care about what age affects on your ability to summit the farm. We did also have to account for the expedition, not because we cared about, but just because when some expeditions almost everybody succeeds, and other expeditions they don't. So it's the same thing here. In some farms almost they're all robust. Other farms maybe there's only fifty percent robust in general, but um, because of yeah, the, because whether yeah, or not you're yeah. robust, it does depend on the farm. You came from, but we don't care about that. We just want to count for it. Am I saying that right? But that's yeah, I, using yeah, that same maybe, language. Yeah, I mean, and maybe, and here's the thing. Okay, so let me let's, let's work through the other ones because maybe this is like one of the things that yeah. they're not saying it. Um, and and by the way, it could be like you. By the way, you could do it both ways. You could just do like, hey, you know, I'm you know doing the whole like you know the global you know um, merging or whatever the pooling. You know, uh, we could we could look at this, but then of course, yeah, you could do. A bunch of nesting i guess it's just like I'm, I'm reading the language okay so using the trees data wish to model it by a, a tree's height by its girth once again i would say this is non-hierarchical but well that one's almost a slam dunk because you look at the data there's nothing else but height girth and something else it's okay not, there's no grouping yep. <laughs> <in the> data. <laughs> yeah yeah 
so yeah maybe that's so, so maybe this, this is actually me, I, me walking back some of my confidence it's like yeah i guess the yeah. fact that they're using real data and they want you to look at it yeah i think you're right ron yeah. because yeah for them to say like oh you know um adjusting for the effects of being in you know this you know forest versus that forest you know uh model the height of versus by its girth i mean that kind of gives it the, the game away right um i think yeah was, but so, there's no that's not in the data that i saw yeah so let's do this then let's let's try i feel bad that i didn't um okay so let's see here hold on wish to model at home's radon levels by its uranium oh, this sounds like fun jeez um okay so it's probably the, so i would say hierarchical because you have yeah. the county right being the grouping so like yeah right you could just like vary it based on the well i say like the county yeah um, I, I think that's right okay, yeah, you're okay right. but let me just i think this one is like a kind of a trick question though because um this first of all the radon data is like everybody's favorite hierarchical sample <laughs> like this what galvan uses right so uh, yeah. you're like, oh, that one's easy, but they don't normally do radon levels by log uranium levels. They're actually looking at like, oh, versus floor or something like that. So um, when you look at the log uranium, it actually turns out it is a group level variable. So it only it only changes by by county. It's the same for everything in the same county. So I, I would say it's just a straight linear regression in this case because you, you, you're it's already that, counted well, for, right? Yeah, I don't know that that's right. Oh, I, I don't know that that's right, though, because look, so like... Okay. In the description of the data, it says, in the description of the data, it says log uranium is for that county, lowest uranium level for that county. So oh, it's already... Oh, yeah. dude. I was sorry, I was looking at this and I was... Oh, was, shoot. Yeah, actually, now I'm looking at yeah. it. Yep. Man, Got dude, it. Dude, so I think it's meant to trick you a little bit. So I'm just went next uh, level. Yeah. That's not awesome. right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did not even... I well, was, in the next chapter, we're going to talk about... In the next chapter, we're going to talk about group level variables like that and how you fit with them as well. So, yeah. And then last, uh, I, th I think it, the, so we'll this, see. Is, this is using roaches, wish to model the number of roaches um, in a, an apartment um, by whether or not the uh, received, um, uh, let's see the pest control. Um, hmm. Yeah, what is, I don't see any grouping variables there either, do you? Um, not really. I mean, I guess you could say like whether it's like a senior senior facility, but that's something. not a grouping variable, right? Because there's only first of all, we might actually care about that one. That's yeah, the first right. Yeah. Yeah. So that, and that that's probably a predictor, right? Mm. All those are yeah. good predictors. Yeah, and, and obviously, but, I mean, but, seniors only got two possibilities. And by the way, so this is clearly a count variable, right? So we got a bunch of zeros. And in fact, I don't know, maybe, maybe like. Um, oh, you know what? There's more to this problem that we're not doing. I forgot. To, you're that, actually supposed to say more about this. Like, not only is it hierarchical, but what is it and how would you roughly approach it? So you're actually on the right track by saying that. Like, how would we model this? Yeah. Um, well, anyway, I mean, um, well, well, and this this is logistic, obviously, right? And then in this case, model well actually that would be um the 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 height has to be um well i guess you could do that as a count i guess you could do i don't know though that's that's weird i mean i guess no, i would just say straight regression straight yeah i don't know i never i guess it depends on yeah um it's funny a lot of this stuff of like what kind of model you do for different outcomes is so um it's so different and different you gotta really read what other people are doing like um, I have a, a, a when I was researching a lot of this yeah. stuff for count data, a big usage of count models and Poisson is cavities, right? So dental, like there's a bunch of dental research on cavities. Uh, like you'd think, oh, you know, I gotta go to the dentist here pretty soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, anyway, so um, it just I guess different fields use different things. All right, so let me just do this real quick because I didn't I didn't really want to get into trying to do. You know all the various modeling because uh, no, that was really useful yeah so look at that exercise, um so remember like you know as i've been saying you know poisson and negative binomials are sort of cousins in the sense that they're both about predicting counts the only difference is is poisson has this assumption of equality between the mean and, and the variance right and negative binomial um does not right so 
a lot of times what we're looking for is um, what's called over dispersion. So uh, um, the variance is larger um, on, the, on the outcome than the mean, right? And so if that's the case, you would use typically use a negative binomial. And then there's another piece to this too. Um, I mean, not, not not that not in the chapter, but often in count models, a lot of times you might have like inflated zeros, right? So you might have more zeros than a Poisson distribution or, or straight up negative binomial distribution. So you end up having these like what are called zero inflated Poisson models and zero inflated negative binomial models, right? And so it just keeps kind of building if you do this type of work, right? I don't know if you think about it like... Um, yeah, I've done that. I've done. I've run into that problem with the zero inflated Poisson before in actual work right. I was doing. Yeah, I actually, so, I accidentally rediscovered the whole thing by myself. I'm like, oh, I guess I need to add another thing in here to count yeah. for the extra zeros. I started. Yeah. Looking, I started looking it up, and I'm like, oh, this is a thing. Yeah, zip and zimb. <laughs> yeah, zip, zip and zimb. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, this happens a lot in medicine where, like, you know, you do things like, oh, you know, patients who are put on ventilators or not. You know, it's like so in different populations, you might have way more non-ventilator patients than you would expect for some reason that you're not accounting for um and that's that's something you to think about so anyway number of reviews is a great count variable because it can only be zero or some positive number and we see here this nice like this is a typical type of a deal when we look at reviews you know um we've got you know a lot of zeros and then it just, I'm assuming, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not sure what the breakdown is here. I didn't really get into that, but you can see how it have this, we have this nice little fanning out here to the right, to the, in the positive direction. This is usually a really nice indicator that we, we need to use a count model of some kind. Um, and then, you know, they, um, just to show, this was like, they just um, use three different neighborhoods as examples. And we can see here, um, you know, like, so we've, we've, ne we've nested or we've, we've done, um, you know, scatter plots, you know, um, faceted by neighborhood and by um, room type. And you can see here, there's quite a bit of variation. And so this would be, you know, a reason to decide to, you know, do a hierarchical or multi-level model. And so that's what we do here. We're doing reviews. And once again, our friend of, you know, one, pipe bar whatever uh, neighborhood and we're doing a poisson model and i was going to do a bunch of different things but this took so freaking long I, I just i ended up stopping so um this is you know um you know what the uh what they, they end up talking about this is like evidence of over dispersion here this uh, this is you know the our, our 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 model here and this is you know what we see in the data and you can see here this is these are not map, mapping on really well. So this would probably be evidence of over dispersion. To, to detect over dispersion, you actually have to, there's functions in R where you feed the model objects into it and it tells, it gives you different indicators and you can also do different types of, you oh, know. That's um, useful. Yeah, but I won't get into that. Um, and then uh, the last thing, this was one, I forget what question this was, but this was the last question and the exercises of, total minutes right and so i mean obviously i didn't spend a lot of time on this this um thing here but you can see how this isn't as nice of a um swoop right, right? We, st we still have that kind of swoopiness but it's kind of you know it's bumpy or and also i did a bad job of you know breaking up these the x-axis but you see here that like so that's one of the things they ask and i didn't even I, this is what i was working on when i ran out of time is you know, why might Poisson model be a reasonable model here? Why might it not be? Well, I I didn't do any of the work, but my spec my my suspicion is that there's over dispersion in, in this. And so we would probably end up using a negative binomial model instead of a Poisson. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. But I I have this is just purely a suspicion because I I didn't have time to do like to run the models would have been like 25 minutes. So um anyway um that's it that's all, all i got so um i think i got you on out on time uh ron uh so next week is uh who's, who's perfect who's, yeah i'll, I'll yeah. round it out it's me for the final final the hurrah. final one final yeah. hurrah last next week so 
Uh, yeah, I look through. I haven't read the whole chapter yet, but I glanced through to see how much work this to try to like prepare myself for how much work I have to do. <laughs> yeah, There's nobody's no. made any notes for this, but um, I'm hoping to be able to get through. It looks really interesting because it talks about like uh, these grouping variables, which are kind of cool, right? So these are variables like the log rate, uh, uranium levels that are actually only vary by group, right? Uh, so that's kind of cool, and it also talks about using multiple groups you know multiple grouping variables like farm and country for example for the uh exactly. coffee one you could potentially imagine using yeah actually that's multi-levels um, that's what they say adding more layers multi multi-levels yeah. <laughs> yeah so that would be like my whole thing of like so, students nested within classrooms that would be one level uh, you know two exactly levels. yeah and then uh schools you know it's classrooms nested with classrooms schools, and schools would be the yeah. third one. and then you could have school and districts countries yeah, yeah. or whatever school <laughs> districts yeah galaxies so it yeah. sounds like it should be fun yeah anyway it should be fun yeah Go hit that dentist and we'll see you uh, next yeah. week. Yes. All right. See you next week. Thanks, guys. Good. Yeah. Bye, guys. Nice job. How's it going?